What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day, the Postseason Edition. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Your support for this channel means a ton, and it will help you never miss out on any live streams, pitcher interviews, and other content. So hit subscribe, and without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches from yesterday. I'm going to start with Christian Javier, who was outstanding yesterday with nine strikeouts and five scoreless innings, giving up only one hit. He did have five walks, but was pretty effectively wild. He relied on his mix of fastballs and sliders, but also threw in some knuckle curves, as well as a few change-ups. His slider was huge yesterday, picking up 13 whiffs on 16 sliders for an 81% whiff rate. He averaged 15 inches of horizontal break on his slider and had up to 18 inches of break on it. Amazingly, Javier had seven whiffs on his slider in the first two innings of the game, which is more than he had in any entire game all year. Here are a few overlays that show why Javier's slider was so effective. Here he uses a fastball off the plate that was taken for a ball to set up a slider for a backwards K. You can see how that slider tracks the path of the fastball. And as a hitter, you think he's going outside with a fastball, but instead you get that slider in the zone. And here are a couple of other fastball slider overlays where you can see here he starts those pitches kind of at the same spot in the strike zone and lets the movement of the pitches do their work. As a hitter, you have to respect Javier's fastball, which keeps its plane really well. And if you cheat to get to that fastball and get a slider instead, you're kind of hosed. Javier outdueled Sonny Gray, who had six Ks in four innings, giving up four earned runs on eight hits and one walk. Gray struggled, but it was really more of the Astros having a really good plan. It seemed like the Astros planned to sit sweeper all game, and Gray only had three whiffs out of 17 swings on his sweeper. He did have this painted two-seamer as well as some nasty sweepers and curveballs. And here's an overlay of a good combination from Gray of his two-seamer and sweeper. And you can see how those pitches switch places. Here's Gray talking about some of his struggles, especially with leadoff hitters. I, I don't think I was great with two strikes. I think at times I was, but I, I think... Actually, I know... Um, not retiring a leadoff hitter um, for the entire time I was out there, something that we were fighting an uphill battle as a team. I was fighting an uphill battle every inning. Probably my highlight from this game was Adam Wainwright going into a long discussion on the sweeper and how it differs from a traditional slider. A slider is going to break traditionally eight, nine inches horizontal. A sweeper, on average, it's breaking 12 to 14. Sunny's, on average, it's sliding 15.5 inches right to left. It's a big breaking pitch. And the difference in a sweeper and a slider, it's... <laughs> Let's see if I can get there. When you throw a slider, you're going to see a red dot, and it's going to be towards the bottom left of the ball. That means it's going down. A sweeper, when you throw the sweeper, when you come through, it's, there's some science behind this. This seam right here, if you can see, this seam has to be pointed in the right direction, and it's kind of angled up and to the right. And when that catches the air halfway through, that's when it starts really taking off right to left. And what happens is it just moves more than a hitter's eyes think it's moving. And so it's, to it's totally different than another slider. It's totally different than a curveball. It's just weird, right? Like, hitters don't see that. Instead of crapping on new pitching terms, this is what an analyst's job should be. Help fans understand the game instead of complaining that it's not the same as it was back in your day. In addition to Christian Javier, my other co-filthiest pitcher of the day was Nathan Ivaldi. Nasty Nate had seven strikeouts in seven innings, giving up five hits and no walks, and gave up only one run. He dominated the Orioles with his mix of fastballs, splitters, as well as some cutters and curveballs. I thought his splitter was outstanding. He picked up eight whiffs on his splitter out of his 16 total whiffs for the game. Here's an overlay of his fastball and splitter, and you can see how it looks like a fastball out of hand and then runs arm side, and that difference in velo, as well as that movement, gets the whiff. And then here's an overlay of his fastball and cutter, and you can see why that is a tough combination for a hitter. I thought this was interesting from Ivaldi. He talked about some mechanical changes he made to help him throw harder, and I thought I'd point them out to you. The Ivaldi in blue is from his game against Seattle from September, back when he was struggling coming back from injury. And the white is from yesterday. And you can see some subtle differences. Yesterday he was counter-rotating a little bit more. You can see his shoulders slightly more closed, as well as his hips slightly more loaded. Just look at his shoulders and the stripe on his pants. That extra load helped him throw a little bit harder. Something he talked about in the post-game press conference. 
it was more so of kind of rotating a little bit more at the top with my knee. I felt like I was bringing it up just kind of straight before. Now I'm trying to bring it back a little bit more towards my back shoulder. And uh, I feel like it gives me a little bit more time to, again, gather the power and deliver it towards the plate. It's somewhat similar to the mechanical adjustment that Chapman made this year, but a little less exaggerated. You can see Chapman really get into his back hip. As with everything, sometimes in baseball, little things mean a lot. Ivaldi outdueled Dean Kramer, who struggled giving up six runs in one and two-thirds innings, including two home runs. I thought the backbreaker was this 15-pitch at bat against Lowe, seeing a ton of pitches and wearing Kramer down. Even though he didn't get a hit in this at bat, it was a great job by Lowe. Of course, Kramer had a little bit more in his mind this game since he has family back in Israel and pitched for Team Israel. I can't even imagine taking the bump in that situation. Huge respect for Dean Kramer, and our thoughts and prayers are with him and his family. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Araldus Chapman had this 102-mile-an-hour heater and then decided not to throw any more strikes. Brian Abreu had these filthy sliders, and here's an overlay of his fastball and slider. Emilio Pagan had this heater. Jose Leclerc had this 98-mile-an-hour diesel. Phil Maton had this curveball with 3,141 RPMs. Rafael Montero had these filthy change-ups. And my filthiest reliever of the day yesterday was D.L. Hall for his three strikeouts on his fastball as well as these change-ups. He's set up to have a big year next year. And now my pitching engine moment of zen. Check out this slide by Jordan Westberg. My man face planted and looked like a scorpion. Here's his mechanics paired up against a scorpion you can see. They are identical. What is up everybody? My picks of the day today are a three leg parlay. I'm going to start out with the same game parlay of Lance Lynn for four K's or more and Brandon Fought for four K's or more. And then I'm going to add in Joe Ryan for five K's or more. And of course, I'm going to use my 30% profit boost from FanDuel for any same game parlay or same game parlay plus of three legs or more. What would your picks of the day be?